Well, I picked up the spree air tank off of Craigslist and it looked like a really good candidate to make a Ford. So I went ahead and cut off the top handle, which I'll reuse. Took the hoses off and got to work with the angle grinder. Had to cut off that front face pretty carefully to make a door out of it. Everything went relatively well. Well, it's kind of a mess right now because I'm taking the wire wheel to it. I'm going to get off all that uh, the red paint and rust and shit and uh, spray paint it with that stuff they paint grills with, that thousand degree black paint. But uh, you put the legs on, uh, longer one for the front and uh, shorter one for the back. That's where the lash hooks in. Here's the lash. And... Uh, the door closes uh, on the hinge over there. We welded uh, this used to be over here on the top, so I just made that for a handle for this. And when the door closes, I just lift it up a little bit because this thing has some play in it, and it rests right on uh, these two tabs. So it'll close up just like that, and then just take the, uh, the latch. And it goes right over this uh, this bolt on the side, and that thing don't go nowhere. So it works pretty good. Open it right up, and uh, it kind of catches over here and stays open, so it won't close and burn my arm and shit. But uh, it's coming along pretty good. Well, it was time to get to work with the wire wheel. Need a nice surface to go ahead and paint. And had to get all that other paint off of there, so took it slow and steady with the wire wheel and eventually got her done. The finished paint job turned out really nice, so all this work was worth it. It's just what you got to do in order to get a good result. The wire wheel took time. Well, it's getting there. Can't do much without the burner being fitted, so we got that taken care of. And I'll tell you what, that cobalt hole saw from Lowe's, man, that thing's a piece of crap. Don't buy one of them. Well, once I got the hole popped in the forge, I needed a way to mount the burner so this way I could position it exactly. And this is what I came up with. Took some pipe, popped some holes in it, went ahead and capped them, and used those three set screws to go ahead and secure it in place. And I went ahead and JB welded the entire thing to the outside. And it holds it nice and secure. Well, I wiped everything down with mineral spirits. 
good, nice, clean surface. And I bought some of that thousand degree barbecue paint. Everybody does black on their forges, so I figured I'd go with something a little bit different. And I was really surprised at how smooth the finish came out after taking the wire wheel to it because it, it looked a lot rougher than what the surface actually is. So I was pretty happy about that. And the finish turned out nice, so no complaints on my end. Can't even tell a wire wheel was on that thing. Well, now it's time to put the insulation in. So I went ahead and traced out the size that I need. I had a, a small size and a large size because of the dome in the end. The small one goes in first and then the larger one on top of it. This is one inch wool. So I have a, a total of two inches there. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the remaining wool for the, uh, the inside lining. And that'll be two inches as well, except for where the fire bricks go. And you'll see that in a moment. And just a word of advice, when you go cutting this wool, make sure you do it outside. Because it actually is some nasty stuff. So now I've got all the wool fitted in. Place the bricks just to make sure I had everything right. And it's looking pretty good, so I brought it outside and trimmed it up with a knife. This stuff actually cuts pretty easy. Well guys, I got the uh, opening in the door cut out. Got a little file work to uh, clean up them rough edges and then I'll put it on the forge and do a test fit. Kind of measured twice and measured three times and only cut once so I only get one shot at it so Hopefully it's in exactly the spot I need it. I'll check back in a bit, give you an update. Alright, well I got the door put back on and the opening's actually looking uh, pretty good. It's lined up pretty well to the to the fire brick. I'm going to go ahead and get down on one knee. Try and get level with the door and uh, the bottom of the opening lines up uh, pretty well with the brick. The brick's down just a little bit on the left side but uh, I could adjust that with the, uh, with the wool on the inside so I'm not concerned about that. But uh, overall I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit it with a little sandpaper and rough up the edges and uh, reshoot it with some paint and go ahead and put wool on the inside of this door now cut that out and that should pretty much complete this sucker so I'll check back with you guys after a while well now it's time to put wool in the lid and what I use to glue this wool to the inside of that lid so it doesn't fall out is sodium silicate and there's videos on YouTube of how to make it I made my own it's basically silica gel 
sodium hydroxide lie in crystal form. And it's a great fireproof adhesive. So I went ahead and glued one to the steel and then glued the large piece of wool directly to the other one using the sodium silicate. Now it's just a matter of cutting out the inside, which you see right there, that little rectangle. And it's looking pretty good. Well, now that all the wool is in, it's time to apply the rigidizer. And you see a paintbrush there, but I started with that and ended up using a pump sprayer instead because I really didn't have enough room to, to really work with that paintbrush. Uh, it was, the quarters were just too tight. So as you can see, I went ahead and popped the hole for the burner in through the uh, wool. So it was just a matter of getting the rigidizer to cover all the surfaces of that wool. Basically forms a really hard crust and no particles float after that. After a week's worth of drying, the rigidizer was finally uh, pretty much cured. So it was time to apply the, uh, the ITC 100. First, I'll open this thing up. Bear with me a second. I'll show you what the inside looks like right now. The hinge system on the uh, forge works uh, real good, and uh, I like that latch. But that's what the inside of the forge looks like, and as you can see, I ran out right at the very end to cover the, the face of this fire brick, but uh, that's really not going to see uh, any direct flame or anything like that, so I'm not really concerned about that. So we're going to give the forge two days to dry and then go through the uh, curing process, sticking one of the burners in that sucker and firing it up to... Uh, give a hard set to that ITC 100. Well, I found this on Craigslist for 100 bucks. He gave it to me for 50. And he also gave me that propane cylinder, a 100 pounder, and his two coil springs. And a rain barrel. Well, the guy's over there cutting the railroad track right now. I need me one of them machines. He's going to let me come over. I really appreciate it. Kind of doing a video documentary of me uh, putting the forge together and all this stuff. So I'll plug you guys on YouTube. It's a badass machine you got. there all day with an angle grinder. I need 
went in cranes too, I had to load that sucker up by myself. Had the railroad track cut down at Tampa Bay Steel, Tampa, Florida. Good people here. A 24 inch, two 18s, and a 16. And the 16 inch piece weighs 42.4 pounds. Heavy guys. Well, the forge needed a table, so I took this old rusty, nasty looking table and went ahead and took the shelves off, replaced that wood. It was thick plastic paint all over this thing, so I took a, my angle grinder with a cutting disc and went ahead and stripped off all that plastic paint, and it was a mess. Once everything was cleaned up, Went ahead and shot it with some paint, cut some new boards for it, spray painted the base. There are the boards that I cut up. Went ahead and spray painted those too. And here's a look at the finished table. Went ahead and put some fire bricks down to go ahead and set this thing on since those shelves are actually wood. Keep it away from the heat. And I think it turned out really nice. It's kind of two-tone. It's black and tan. So the tan kind of matches the forge. Getting a little carried away with myself there. But I had the paint, so I used it. Well, to pretty up the latch a little bit, I went ahead and fabricated a little handle. Basically a block of wood, drilled a hole, screwed it down onto that big protruding bolt there. Took my angle grinder and rounded off the edges, sanded it up, threw a little oil on it. Well, here's something else I fabricated, but I can't take credit for the design. Saw a guy make this for his charcoal forge. Basically a tube right there that's going to house that piece of rebar with that other tube, another piece of rebar attached to a few more and this way you can hold your stock rather than holding it by hand in front of a 2000 degree plus forge so shoot everything with paint gave those a nice coat of aluminum paint and that's what it looks like so if you have a long piece of stock you need to put in the forge you don't have to sit there and hold it And here's a look at the finished forge. On its new table. That rolls around. I like it. So let me put on my stick gloves. There she is in all her glory.
and that is a chunk of metal ready to be forged. Thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate you.